Welcome to today's class. In our chemistry today, we'll take a look at uh, electronic configuration. Electronic configuration actually is the pattern of arrangement of the pattern of arrangement of the electrons around the nucleus of an atom. So we have chemistry here. Our topic is electronic configuration. Now, there are numbers used to define the position of electrons in an atom, and these numbers are what we call the quantum numbers. There are four quantum numbers, and uh, the lecture for quantum numbers will come on a separate case. Today, we'll take a look at how to write electronic configuration, at least for the first 20 elements, and how to use electronic configuration to determine the position of an element in the periodic table. It makes it very easy. No, we have the long method and short method. Here, I'll use the easiest method then teach you the normal process. First, we just have to count in this way. Just first, we need to, like in secondary school, we have senior preferred. You may say S, S, P, S, P. Destiny, a funny student like that, one says senior, senior, preferred, senior, preferred, senior. Then you can now place a number. So you can call it S, S, P, S, P, S. Or you just say write 2 S, P, 2 S, P, and close it with S. That's S, P, sp then close it with s on each side and we have gotten this s s p s p s simple s s p s p s then we place a number behind each of them and the counting today should be one two two three three four so we have s s p s p s one two two three three four s s p s p s one two two three three four so that's it for the first 20 elements at least then one should note that whenever you see s you should not put more than two electrons there when you see p you should not put more than six when you see d don't put more than 10 when you see f you shouldn't put more than 14. so that's it so to apply this let's assume we are asked to write the electronic conversion of sodium the atomic number of sodium is number 11 you repeat our s s p s p s one two two three three four four then you start sharing 11 remember this is s so don't put more than two you just put two then when you put two it remains nine you shouldn't put the whole nine here because s should not contain more than nine you put two again then when you put two what remains here now is about seven then you shouldn't put the seven here because of the fact that p can hold the maximum of six so you put six the remaining one comes here so this is now empty shell we clean it off so this is the electronic configuration of sodium 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Then look at the amazing thing about this configuration. Here, when s ends the configuration, it tells everything about the group, the period, and also the block to which it belongs to. So this number here, let's use another contract. Uh -huh. So here should be the group one shows that sodium is in group 1 here shows that sodium belongs to period 3 and here shows that it belongs to s block this is only when s ends the configuration but a situation where n do not end it let's see for sulfur for example now writing the electronic configuration of sulfur we have that s is equal to 16 Remember, we have our S, S, P, S, P, S, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4. Then we put 2 here, 2 here. Uh, what remains here? 6 here. Then 2 here. We have distributed. Then finally 4. And that's 16, which shows that the 4S is empty. We clean it off. So having seen this, you see 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2. Then this can also be determining structure still this time around sulfur belongs to p block then period three but not group four when it is not s that ends it you sum it up this way so that means that sulfur belongs to group six that's two plus four we show you the group of sulfur and that's how to do the electronic what configuration but when s ends it you use it that way then another special case is for the period, like for the D elements, D block elements, the last thing cannot give you the period accurately. Let's say 
scandium will eventually end in because scandium should be 21 scandium is 21 and uh, that should be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 and 3d1 probably that's the way it should be 3d1 so with what i taught you now you will now say that this is group one of course it's not in group one at all because this is not s that ends it remember you are told that when s do not end it to sum up to the next so we have two plus one so scandium should be in group three exactly that means after if you arrange it sequentially don't be deceived remember we have 18 groups in the periodic table not eight but the eight is just called the eight main groups due to confusion in the numbering in american britain method then conventionally the groups are decided to be numbered serially from one to eighteen so you start from group one which is that of sodium you call it one that of calcium group two then that of uh, scandium so if you come in period four you have potassium calcium scandium and so that's it so this should be group three then watch where period changes don't say period three here when d ends it what you do is just add plus one to it and get it correct so scandium belongs to three plus one which is four it belongs to period four the same thing is applicable when f ends it let's assume the configuration added in four f three you should now know that you have to add this three to whatever that is following it for you to get the group but the period should not be period four for d you add plus one then for f you add plus two so the particular period to which this element that ends this way will belong should be period six why this one should be period four now let's see the longer way of writing the configuration remember we have seven periods in the periodic table therefore we have one two three four five six seven then we will have our three alpha, uh, four alphabets today s p d f s p d f so let's take it that here is one two three and four s we know s will come in when we are up to in one p will come in only in the second period d can only come in in the third and f in the fourth so we don't have anything like three f neither do we have anything like two d d starts from three p starts from two and s starts from one then we have here is only one so what can come in is s here is only two so you can come in with s then p comes in this becomes our s line so we have three s then we have now this everything here should be two this should be two then here should now be three p we are up to three therefore d can now come in here should be four s then four p four d then f can now come in so we have five s five p five d then we have the five f then here is 6s, 6p, 6d, 6f, 7s, 7p. We have not discovered the element that will fill this one, but we are just writing it. So we have 7d and 7f. So watch it. I'm going to make rows and columns. Okay. Okay, then we join diagonals that's in this way from here to here that's one join another diagonal join again that's connecting 3p to 4s connecting 3d 4p and 5s then connecting 4d 5p and 6s connecting 4f 5d 6p and 7s Connecting 5F, 6D, and 7P. Connecting 6F, 7D, then 7F alone. So we have the arrow 1. Okay, let's use a different colors. Okay, this should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So this is half bow. This is the order of filling of the orbital in case if you are writing for elements that even have above 20 that is up to 100 so we start with one in arrow one we have only one s then in arrow two we have only two s which is rhyming with what i taught you one s two s also then after that you have in line three we have arrow three we have two p connecting to three s then three s to we go back to four remember when you finish you go back don't go this way after three you can start here that's after 3s you go to 3p 4s 
after 4s 3d and after 3d 4p after 4p 5s after 5s 4d in that order till we get to 7f so with this now you can write the normal electronic configuration so this should be the order, but I just cut it short by giving you S, S, P, S, P, S, then 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4 for the first 20 elements. So that's the order of filling. Remember, there shouldn't be comma there. Though for the transition elements, some of them don't follow this order. Some transition elements, there are 4S is filled before 3D. Oh, sorry. This is what should be normal, but most of the transition elements, there are three Ds filled before four Fs, which is wrong. This mean this order shows that one S must be filled before electron will go to two S, before it goes to two P, before it goes to three S. When we will discuss the quantum numbers, we will remind you the rules and the laws guiding the quantum number and writing of electronic configuration, the Horn's rule, the uh, Pauli's exclusive principle. So most transition elements like copper and chromium. They don't, their 4s is not filled before 3d, rather their 3d is filled before their 4s, so it is not obeying this. Apart from some of the transition elements, every other element follows this order, and that's what we call alphabet. The electronic conversion of copper, remember copper is having the number 29, that is the atomic number. So by this method, we have that it should now be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. 3p6 then you have your normally should now be 4s2 then we are sharing 29 this is 20 then 3d9 this is what you are expected to write but unfortunately this is wrong configuration but by looking at it you follow the half bar so this one should be wrong that's wrong way then i told you earlier that when you come to most of the transition elements that the in this way the 3d is filled before the 4s so the correct electronic configuration of copper should now be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 then 3p6 then instead of having 4s2 first we have 3d10 the, the 3d has to be filled before the remaining electron could go to that so if you have 3d10 check this the total number here should now be 28 so we are left with only 4s1 Let's put in some parts here. So we are left with only 4s1. So this is the correct electronic configuration of copper. Then when this happens, don't say that copper is in group 1 like I thought earlier. No, you should know that normally there should be 4s before 3d. So you still do the normal summation. That should be in, you get it in 11. So copper is in group 11 or what we call formally called group 1b so don't take that this the s is not the differentiating electron rather the differentiating electron is the d so it belongs to d block and not s block so if you follow the half bar for you to see where an element belongs if you follow the other that should be 4s before 3d so the last should be d according to this order of filling of orbitals okay other elements also below Other elements in the same group with copper, that is copper, silver, and gold, which are collectively called coinage metal, that's CU, AG, and AU, collectively called coinage metals. The coinage metals, are, they are malleable and they are commonly used for building coins, and hence their name. You also follow this type of configuration, which means after copper you have silver, in that of silver you now have 4D10, 5S1. In that of gold, it will end with 5D10 and 6S1. That is how they all follow the other. That's all of them belong to group 1B formally, but now called group 11. So the coinage method generally have a configuration that ends in ND10 bracket. That's ND10, then N plus 1, S1. That's the order they follow. So that's it. In a special case, these are special cases of electronic word configuration.